What's up guys and welcome back to my garage. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we finished up our first ever V8 swap in an El Camino, also known as the Jesse. But today I think it's important we get back to, I don't know, making some money again. We only have $5,500 in the bank account, but we do still have the original engine from the Jesse. We also still have the uh, Bart shell that we took the V8 out of. So the game plan for today is I want to get the original Jesse engine dropped into the Bart, and we'll get this shell nice and cleaned up and ready for resale. But before we do that, you guys may remember, this engine seemed to have some sort of an issue with it. When it was in the Jesse, the rest of the vehicle was completely fine, though it still had an overall condition of like three or four stars, something like that. So there is something, there is something on this engine that's a problem. We're going to have to uh, take it apart a little bit. Or my theory was it was the crank. So maybe we just clip our clip our head through the block. And there she is, ladies and gents. Looks like we've got a pretty gnarly crank from the bottom side of the piston heads. I don't see any real issues. This one piston, though, might be, might be a problem. So... That makes things a lot easier. Let's get this thing rotated. Also, this is what's known as, just real quick, this is what's known as a slant six, which is an inline six or straight six, though it's mounted, you can see here on the engine stand, at a slight angle. But we're gonna we're gonna flip it over. Just a little little side note for you guys. We're gonna take the oil pan off, take a couple of the timing components off, just so we can get that crankshaft and maybe the one piston removed as well. I decided to move the engine from the stand over here to the countertop instead because I kind of needed easier access to everything on the backside. You know, pressure plates, flywheel, clutch disc, all that type of stuff. And the engine stand, the mount for it does kind of get in the way of those items. But uh, with it over here, we've got the crankshaft now removed and the one bad piston. I was honestly expecting more, but certainly, uh, certainly not complaining. So we just need the one piston and a new crankshaft and we'll get this thing thrown back together. We should be good to go. It's going to be 48 bucks for Le Piston and 241 bucks for the crankshaft. But we need them. We we really really do. It's also probably time for us to finally scrap all the original parts that we took off of the V8 that were bad, starting with the crankshaft. That's 10 bones. Next, we've got the dusted piston, two bones. Kind of surprised about that. Alrighty, we made a couple of bucks. I mean, it's never anything too crazy when we do stuff like that, but a couple of bucks is a couple of bucks. So let's see if we can actually install the pistons onto the crank. It looks like we can before we actually get it all set in there. We might want to install one, maybe tighten the bolts and then move on to the next. Hang on, let me try the third here. See if that one's going to work. Okay, we did miss one, though. Hang on. Oh, no, it's fine. We can we can tighten them all after the fact, I suppose. Okay, now that the engine is reassembled, the next order of business is going to be getting the Jesse out of the shop and the Bart... In. The Jesse, thankfully, runs great. As we learned in the previous episode, the Bart, we're going to have to push inside.
something that I completely forgot about is just how difficult it might be to actually get this vehicle lined up on the hoist. Hang on, just stay right there. I think we might have actually done did it. Hang on, it's got to go back just like an inch, maybe. Excuse me, what? Since... I don't want to lift it up all the way. Since when has this made noise? It's... I promise you, it has never made a sound before. Never made a peep. And today, all of a sudden, it's making noises. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I definitely like it. I was just really thrown off by it. Really surprised. So, uh, if you guys remember, this vehicle did have a V8 in it originally. So, this is the original exhaust, which came off of two separate exhaust headers. Obviously, the engine we're putting in now only has the one set of headers. So, we could probably use this exhaust, though we'll most likely just have to get a new one. But rather than throwing these in the dumpster, since it's the perfect time of day, I'm going to walk each one. Yeah, I'm going to walk each one because we can't put them in the bag. And uh, we'll see what the pawn shop guy is going to give us for these. Afternoon, brethren. 82 buckaroonies. Thank you, sir. Hang on, I'll be right back. I got one more. Watch him change up his price now and offer us less since we... Since we just brought him one, this one's more expensive for some reason. Okay, 119, and I couldn't help but notice we have like uh, a chest of some sort over in over in this shipping container. Can we sell this to that guy also? No, zero, zero bones. You know what? I'm gonna take this home. I'm probably not gonna use it for anything, but it's a nice decorative piece. And when I say home, I mean the garage. Even though we have a fantastic cabin out in the woods, we live here, pretty much. We, we don't really ever leave here. Now then, just before we get the engine dropped in, the new engine dropped in, I couldn't help but notice, I think our radiator is actually a little toasted. So, four bolts right there. This guy's going to come out, and we'll see how much we can get for it. Just $4. Hey, pawn shop guy, do you take used radiators? I can't even see where I'm going. As long as it's more than like four bucks. Oh yeah, 17. Um, all right, I guess that's that then. It's gonna be just shy of a hundred bones for a brand spanking new radiator. And then we also need an upper hose. Just one of those, I think. I think that should be just about everything for the time being. So let's get the new radiator mounted up. Let's get rid of our old upper hose. And then I totally forgot to get a starter. Dang it. I knew there was something else, dude. There's there's always something else. $200. Holy cow, dude. $200 for a new starter. And I lost my wrench. Hang on. We're good. Everything's fine, you guys. It's fine. We just need to loosen up two bolts here on the original starter. How much are we going to get for that? $9. $9. And a new one is $200. Okay, one more thing that I forgot. The drive shaft. Not going to be going very far without one of those. So let's see how much that's going to cost us. As expected, around 200 bucks, 241 for that deal. I just wanted to make sure that we had that ready to go because right now we're going to make our way back over to the engine stand, loosen those four bolts up, and we'll drop this this engine down inside of the bar. Dude, it looks so funny in there. It looks so small. Okay, we've got to tighten just the one. Not right there. Lags every time. Literally every time. One nut right there all right now we're ready for the transmission that's gonna go back there four bolts on the top might have to lean in again also might have to lower the lift oh no we've got it we'll grab our transmission support bracket or brace whatever you want to call this deal four bolts there two on the transmission itself next up drive shaft and then we're about done fluids and and that really that really about does it for this thing. But before we lower it back down, I want to grab the original exhaust. Again, this is the original exhaust from the Jesse when it had the Slant 6 inside of it. So I have no idea if it's actually going to fit on this vehicle. 
Might be a little long. Yeah, I'm not a fan. In fact, I think our little friend down here might actually appreciate it more than I do. 71 bucks. Thank you so much. I'm fairly certain that this exhaust right here is one of the two exhausts that we gave the pawn shop dude earlier. The ones with the with the square exhaust tips. But maybe not. Maybe it's maybe it's completely different and designed specifically for this engine. No, it's it's exactly the same. Go figure. What's going on up there? Is the hood? Oh, the hood's just hitting the ceiling. My bad. We'll drop it back down. I think we're we're done underneath of it for right now. Got to button up a couple of things in the engine bay yet, and then we can go through to our quick rust repair, respray, and we can get it sold off. Finally, make a little bit of money. It's that time again where we got to run across the street just so we can get some fluids. The developer. The developer just started adding sound effects, dude. I kind of like it. If any of you guys are wondering why it seems like I always skip uh, the fluids, it's because it takes forever and takes so much. Why does it take so much? I swear I just put half of one in. That went empty. I just put one entire jug in. That's empty. And now I have to come back across the street to get another. But yeah, plain and simple, it, it just takes too long. So I usually end up cutting it out. Also, no sound effects to this procedure yet. Yet. The developer might change that. Now that we've finished up with all the fluids, I want to check in here and see the price. 14000 Back up to 14000 Right around the same dollar amount that we actually purchased this vehicle for. And it has a completely different engine in it now. So, looks like the original color was actually brown current color is green for the most part there's a couple of different mismatch panels on it overall condition three stars so we need to bring that color condition up we need to bring that uh, that rust condition up the only thing i don't think we're going to worry about is the interior because i'll be honest i don't really feel like taking a, a super long road trip all the way out to the upholstery shop it just doesn't sound like a good time so let's get going on this rust repair i've already got the parking brake disengaged i'm going to push it back just a couple of feet so we can have a bit easier access to this rocker panel. Dude, it's always the rocker panels, isn't it? It's looking better. Definitely looking better. And I notice we have a little bit of rust here on the inside of the door. I guess that's all that that thing needed. And then I know there were other spots, but now I can't seem to find them. Oh, here on the quarter panel, another tiny spot also on the quarter panel. I guess that takes care of that. And then working around to the rear bumper. You know, I don't think I've ever tried to remove a license plate in this game. But I really don't like the front plate on the El Camino. So, I guess let's figure out how to remove that one way or another. It's probably the wrench. Nope, it's looking like those are screws. Also got old Chromey taken off here so we can really get at all this rust. Might even have to remove... At least one taillight. How's the rust looking now? Five stars, baby. We love to see it. And a uh, a price already of 18,000 bucks. We haven't even resprayed the thing yet. So now, actually, I'm going to leave the chromie off until we do get it resprayed. But I think I'm going to end up respraying it the green color that it is. Even though that's not the original color, I realize we could probably fetch a higher price for respraying it all original. But it's already, for the most part, all green. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue what the previous owner had. 40B24B. 40B24B. Another green. Another green to add to our collection. Gotta love that. Look at all these. It's, I mean, it's mostly shades of green. Also, I really do want to respray the El Camino. We'll get to that in a future episode for show. Maybe, uh, maybe the same episode we do... Like some, some engine upgrades to that V8 in there. But we're going to lay down some color here real quick. And we'll see what the what the final price is going to be. Survey says 20... Wait, what? Why did the overall condition just jump from 3 stars to 5? What is happening, dude? I Okay, now it's back to 3. And it went up to 21,000. I don't necessarily understand, but also 
it's kind of looking like it's leaning a little bit. Do we have some suspension problems? We do. We've got a blown strut up in the front. No struts in the rear, though it looks like that, um, that leaf spring right there is kind of busted. That one seems fine. And, oh, we've got a busted tie rod and another busted front strut. Okay, before we sell this thing off, let's get it put back on the hoist. At least this thing actually runs now, so that'll be quite a bit easier to do. We're going to need one leaf spring for 86, 25, one rear shock absorber for 46, two fronts also for 46, and then a single tie rod. All right, that is it. Okay, I lied unintentionally. The last thing, the actual last thing that we're going to be doing today is replacing one of these rear calipers. Thankfully, the pads are in decent condition. We just need a new caliper. And then we'll finally be done. I, I swear. This thing better bring us some serious buku bucks, you guys. I think we spent just around $1,000 on the entire procedure here today. 21.8, almost $22,000 for this unit. Overall condition now four stars instead of the three that it was before. And again, I'm not going to be worried about the interior whatsoever. That's probably the only thing left that's bringing the overall condition down. But 21.8 thousand bucks. Let's sell it off, and we are now left with $26,000. And I think that is where we're going to wind things down at for today. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.